Hi, I'm Nick Lethby. I'm the Operating System Product Manager at TI. And in this presentation, we're going to go through a number of the OS components that make up TI RTOS so you get a better idea for their individual features and benefits. We'll start with the SysBIOS real-time kernel. SysBIOS is a true real-time kernel in that all its operations are deterministic, which means that we guarantee that a particular OS function will complete within a certain amount of time. And we include in it detailed benchmarks that you can refer to so you can be completely sure that if you, if you do a particular OS call that it will complete with a certain time and you can make sure you meet your real-time deadlines. In addition to the deterministic behavior, another aspect that's very important in RTOS behavior is latency and that's the amount of time for which an OS disables interrupts while it updates critical data structures. In SysBIOS we make sure that that interrupt latency time is minimized and in addition especially um, for some of our microcontroller devices such as ARM Cortex-M devices and the C2000 based devices which are used often hard real-time motor control we have a feature called zero interrupt latency and that means that certain critical interrupts uh, aren't subject to OS latency at all and that means you can use them and be sure that they will instantly um, be triggered when the interrupt occurs. Another key aspect of an embedded OS is its footprint and SysBIOS is very very configurable and you can configure out any functions you don't need to use and in addition, the tools associated with it include something called static configuration, which enable you to remove, create, and delete calls and simply create the OS data structures statically on the host. And that saves you both uh, flash size because you don't need to include the code. And it also eliminates the need for dynamic heaps, uh, which you need if you have dynamically created objects. So we save you both RAM and flash with this static configuration feature. Finally, it's very, very easy to use TIRTOS. All the calls are available as C functions. And in addition, uh, the interrupt handlers um, associated with C, all your ISRs can be written in C. There's no need to write and maintain uh, assembly level code when using TIRTOS. So let's look at some of the individual functions that SysBIOS provides. At the core in the gray uh, circle you'll see the device specific functions and these are all dependent on particular hardware features in the device support so we have interrupt management power management which we support today for our MSP430 microcontrollers and exception handling which is um, only available for our ARM Cortex-M based devices and timers so every uh, device has timers and the OS needs a timer to take its uh, tick rate from. So all these uh, core hardware functions are wrapped by in the RTOS itself. Then around that we have our generic multitasking and communication, interprocessor communications. At the bottom we see we have these threading services and SysBIOS provides tasks which you probably are totally familiar with which are a task is an independent thread of execution that has its own stack and can yield the processor by pending on a semaphore or pending on a mailbox then we have something called software interrupts and just to be clear these are not software interrupts you necessarily think of associated with a particular device they are a particular type of thread which is had doesn't have its own stack it uses the common system stack a software interrupt also cannot yield, so it cannot pend on a semaphore. It in fact executes the completion, but it can be preempted. So imagine you basically a software interrupt can be um, triggered, it runs, and the only thing that stops it running is being preempted by a higher priority software interrupt or a ISR. And a software interrupt, the advantages of it is that its context switch is faster. And it also uses the system stack, so therefore you don't need to have individual task stacks. Therefore, it uses less RAM and it runs more quickly. So if you, if you have a particular thread that you want to run, you need higher performance, you want to use less memory, a software interrupt is a good choice. Then we have these things called clock threads, which are 
time triggered threads. If you want a particular thread that runs every say two milliseconds or every hundred milliseconds, you can use a clock thread to trigger that thread at that particular time. And finally, we have the idle thread, which is just a very the lowest priority background thread. And if you have some background threads you want to run at extremely low priority, you can use the idle thread. Or conversely, if you want to go into some kind of low power mode, when you go into the idle thread, you know that your system is doing nothing. So it's a perfect time to go into a low power mode and switch the processor down or switch off particular power domains and save battery space. Going to the top of the circle, we have the interprocessor communication services, such as mailboxes and semaphores and gates. Uh, gates basically enable you to control access to critical data st uh, structure, so you don't have two threads altering a data structure at the same time. Uh, semaphores um, and mailboxes are simply ways where the task can, you know, basically penned or post on a mailbox, leaving a small message for another task. And then finally, events allow a task to pend on multiple events. So let's say you have a task and you want to make it wait and only wake up when either a semaphore is posted or a mailbox is posted or some I.O. event occurs. You can basically make those all part of a single event and the task will wait up, wake up when that event occurs. So it's a very, very efficient way. You don't have to have the task looping around, checking on a semaphore and checking on a mailbox. It just simply pens on this event and will be woken up when any of those particular things feeding into that event occur. Then on the right of the circle, we have our various memory management options. We have variable size heaps. We have fixed size buffers, which are, of course, um, faster and more deterministic in their operation. And finally, we have a a, a, a variable sized allocator made up of multiple fixed size buffers, which gives you the best of variable size allocation that's also both deterministic and very fast. And on the left hand side, we have various debug and analysis uh, features in the kernel, and they consist of things like logging, where you um, log a user defined event or log a task context switch to it in a very deterministic manner. We also have uh, hook functions, which means that it's, a, it's a, a function that can be called a user-defined function. You can call it a task context switch time or a task create time. So if there's something you want to look at specifically when a task context switch occurs, you can write your own user-defined hook function, which can do either application-specific things or application-specific debug functions. And then, you, for example, you can check a stack. Um, every time you switch um, tasks, you can check, did, we, did, we, did, a stack, sorry, did a stack overflow occur? So that uh, summarizes the SysBIOS kernel. So now we're going to move on to a specific TIRTOS module called IPC, which is basically used for interprocessor communication. And it's uh, used really for our concerto devices. And the concerto devices consist of a ARM Cortex-M3 controller, which really manages most of the general system control. And it then communicates with the C2000 uh, digital signal controller, which is optimized for motor control. So there's some nice features that go about here. One is that um, we have both the SysBIOS kernel running on both the C288X digital signal controller and the ARM Cortex-M3. So if you have a situation where you've got a function you want, you're not sure, should I run it on the C2000 or should I run it on the ARM Cortex-M3, you can very easily move it from one to the other because it's making the same OS system calls from that particular function. Then, um, the, the, you can communicate between a, a task on the ARM core and a task on the C2000 core using um, various features in this IPC module. And primarily what we offer you is something called message queue and we offer you something called notify. Now message queue is a zero copy mechanism for passing variable size data buffers between the ARM core and the C2000 core. We do it via shared memory, so there's no copying. We simply pass a pointer to the buffer between the two cores. 
then if you want to uh, trigger a very, very fast response on the other core, we have this uh, feature called Notify. And Notify basically multiplexes the core-to-core -core interrupt. So when an interrupt comes through with a certain 32-bit uh, uh, payload, it will vector off to a particular function and you can have maybe several different functions that respond to this notify call and the notify payload of 32 bits will tell me I want this particular uh, function to run or that particular function to run. So you basically get a, re a function responding on the other core virtually as quickly as an ISR would. So it's a very, very fast way to get the other core to do an asynchronous um, function operation. And then finally, uh, I might note that um, if you go to our uh, tools uh, presentation, you'll see a tool called System Analyzer. And in that, you'll see the System Analyzer shows this time-based uh, event uh, display. And um, it can show multiple uh, multiprocessor correlated information between the C2000 processor and the ARM M3 processor. We'll talk now about the device drivers that come in TIR TOS. The device drivers, there's really, uh, really fall into two different buckets. You'll see at the top of the table here, there's uh, three different drivers shaded in gray. And those uh, drivers are ones that are intended to be used not directly by the application, but they're used underneath the TIR TOS middleware stack. So for example, there's a, an ethernet driver that works with the TCP IP stack, and there are SD card drivers and uh, USB flash card drivers that work with the uh, FAT file system we provide with TIR TOS. Then there's uh, five other drivers we have. The bottom three, the UART, the I squared C, and the LED are intended for direct use by the application. And uh, you, you'll likely use them unmodified, but of course you can modify them if you wish to. And in the middle, we have these USB HID and USB uh, CDC drivers. And those drivers there are really reference drivers. They work. But there's a very large range of potential CDC devices and HID devices. You know, it could be touchscreen, mouse, you know, keyboard. There's lots and lots of potential human interface devices. So we give you these reference working examples. And it's quite likely you'll need to modify them to work with a particular device you decide makes sense for your, system, your application. And some generic points about these drivers, one is they have a consistent uh, API across each what we call class of device. So the UART driver has a standardized UART interface which will be present on the UART uh, drivers for any other TI core. So the ARM core, the C2000 core, the MSP430 core, they will all have the same uh, UART interface as will these other peripherals. Uh, there's no generalized OS interface like we used to have on DSP BIOS, which some of you may be familiar with if you're longtime C2000 or DSP users. Um, we obviously provide full C source code for the drivers because uh, when you're dry, either debugging your initialization uh, startup code or debugging the driver, you often will need to see uh, debug code to make sure things are working. As I pointed earlier, we use the unmodified Stellarisware and Mware libraries that come with the uh, Concerto and Stellaris devices. That means you have very, very solid, robust code, and we simply uh, basically add some APIs on top of those to make them workable in the thread safe environment and plug in the SysBIOS interrupt handler to make sure they um, work cleanly of the rest of the OS. The drivers are written to work with tasks. You can also have drivers work directly with uh, the software interrupts if you want, but you'd have to modify them to do that. And then finally, our configuration for drivers is very basic. We just have instrument and non-instrumented. And um, if you're familiar with the Grace tool in the MSP430 world, we do not do detailed uh, uh, bit level configuration of all the control registers of the drivers associated with TIR TOS. Now, uh, probably the most uh, maybe valuable area of TIR TOS uh, for many of our customers are the middleware modules, which consist of TCP IP, USB, and uh, the FAT file system. We'll start by looking at the TCP IP stack. So, this stack here is 
a uh, few points to make. One is that it supports both IPv4 and IPv6. So obviously the world right now is starting to transition into IPv6. So we provide uh, the support for that. And it's a dual mode stack and you can uh, configure out IPv6. So obviously IPv6 adds quite a bit of code size overhead. And if you don't want that code size, you can then um, uh, configure it out. Um, we have a large number of um, common network applications you can see at the top here, like HTTP, TFTP, Telnet. All those type of things are available. You, again, you can configure those out. And we provide both standard Berkeley sockets interface. So if you want to port any other applications, network applications, it's very easy. If, on the other hand, you're concerned about zero copy, you want to really reduce the overhead, you can use, we have a zero copy sockets interface. So that the point here is that this stack is very configurable, so you can configure it for code size to reduce it. You can also configure it uh, to get better performance with zero copy mode if you need to. The USB stack, we support both host and device, and of course uh, OTG as well in the USB stack. And we have a number of class drivers. We have um, MSC, uh, host, which you can use with the uh, FAT file system to read and write USB um, flash drives. We also have uh, the CDC device only then for the HID, which is a human interface device. We have both host and device, sorry, class drivers. The FAT file system is an open source uh, FAT file system so that most of the code you see in TI Artos actually, almost all of it comes from TI itself, but the FATFS is an open source uh, FAT file system. And obviously you're probably familiar that Windows operating system uses the FAT file system. So basically any FAT file system is compatible with Windows, which makes it very easy to e exchange data with a PC or with in fact any other device that uses a FAT file system, which is virtually everything as it's a de facto industry standard. There's a number of uh, features inside of uh, the FAT file system, like uh, having a separate buffer for the FAT structure to make it support multiple files if necessary. One important feature to note here is that we, we support in our default version of the build FAT12, FAT16, and FAT32, which limits you to the old 8x3 file names you maybe remember from the uh, MS-DOS days. And um, if you want to have long file names, as is typical in Windows today, that those um, file names are subject to um, a, a patent called VFAT from Microsoft. And you will have to go and rebuild the uh, FAT file system to include that feature. And you are responsible for any discuss discussions with Microsoft about licensing those patents. Uh, TI does not indemnify you. So we just want to make it clear to you that uh, if you want to use VFAT, you do have to you know, do that at your own risk and negotiate it with Microsoft. Finally, as we mentioned earlier, this FAT file system has two different uh, options. An SD card um, via uh, SD driver is done via a SPI interface, and then we have the flash drive, USB flash drive via the USB and the um, MSC uh, mass storage stack. Now that FAT file system also um, has, of course, its own native APIs for um, high efficiency, but also we have a C runtime library. So you're doubtless familiar with the C runtime library. It has, comes, it's a standard part of the ANSI C and it comes with various arithmetic operations like div, fmod. It has operations like malloc for memory allocation, printf, and it has file open, f open, f read, f write operations. So uh, one thing with the CRTS, we use the standard uh, C runtime system that's supplied with the uh, TIC compiler, and uh, we then plug in uh, that on top. We can plug those uh, F open functions on top of the FAT file system. So if you'd rather use C standard I/O operations like F read, F write, you can do so. Also, we make sure that the um, particular um, RTS implementation is completely thread safe. So uh, the uh, C uh, compiler RTS is designed to have pluggable locks, and we plug in locks from TI RTOS to make sure that it works in a thread safe manner. And then finally, we also replace its malloc function with a thread safe malloc function from um, SysBIOS to make sure that you, again, this whole, uh, all these functions work in a completely multitasking safe manner.
So to summarize, uh, the good, nice thing about TI RTOS is it has, it provides all these things like TCP IP stacks, USB stacks, drivers out of the box working. So you, the application developer, can focus on the functions such as mother control that your expertise is and not worry about, oh, how do I add interconnect, internet connectivity? We add that for you. In addition to the modules we've described here, there's many other modules such as CAN and Bluetooth available through our partners. And then finally, we make sure that your application code is abstracted away from the specifics of the device hardware. So whenever you want to move to the latest and greatest TI microcontroller, it's very easy to do. You don't have to start rewriting parts of your app because it's talking to a low-level register-specific device. Now, to learn more, of course, the best way is to really get involved, get your hands dirty, and actually start writing code. So you can go to this, um, the URL you see here, which is very easy to remember. It's on ti.com slash tool slash ti dash RTOS. You can download that, and then there's many examples to get you going and to uh, really understand how to use the features we provide. So I'd like to, like to thank you for your time, and goodbye.